Well, good afternoon, and it's showtime. <laughs> I like that because that's uh, StreamYard. We're streaming live on StreamYard, and this portion of the Stu and Dot show is being brought to you by the Players NIL. And the Players NIL is not just for young athletes, women and men, boys and girls, um, but it's for anyone that has a special talent. So if you're a great chess player, you need to understand your name, your image, and your likeness. And what the NIL does, the players NIL, I should say, they have a platform. They have a curriculum to help you, guide you, so that you can fully take advantage of your name, image, and likeness. And you don't just have to be uh, an athlete. You can be a great pianist, a great painter. You're a player. So anyway, but it, it was started because of athletes. And if I had had this when I was a young fella, a young boy, it would have made a huge difference. So um, the greatest gift we can give our youth is uh knowledge and wisdom that uh, we wish we had had. So, so to help future generations get better and uh, bring more peace, prosperity, and happiness to everyone. So there you have it. Well, this is the Stu and Dot show. And obviously Dot's here because I believe in Lombardi time. And Stu does too, but maybe he's having challenges getting on. Let's see here. Let's see if he's texted me. He hasn't texted me. Um, let's see if I can give him a call. Let's see if we can get him on the phone here. Let's see. It's ringing. Stu Schweigert. He has the record at Purdue University for the most interceptions of any player to have played at Purdue University in West Lafayette. And then he, um, he was a Raider. He, uh, he, Mr. Davis, I know, loved him when he was with the Raiders because he he played with passion. And uh, we met um, about a week and a half ago here in Las Vegas. And Stu uh, was there. We're, we had our Raider alumni reunion. And Stuart was there. And we immediately hit it off. He has this kinetic energy. And obviously, I have a little energy, too. And uh, I found out that he has a show and, and he, I let him know that we have a show, you know, we have the on the dot show. And then we said, why don't we combine our forces to have a, a joint show and we'll call it the stew and dot show. And we're going to obviously talk about American football, but we're going to talk about other things because um, there's more than just football that makes the world go round. But Boy, what a great week end starting tomorrow with American football. The NFL starts out tomorrow. And let me go, let me just show you the, the game tomorrow is the Buffalo Bills are coming from upstate New York all the way over to Los Angeles to play the Rams. And I am going to say that the Bills are going to win. That's my prediction. Even though the Rams are the defending national, uh, you know, Super Bowl champions. I was going to say national champions, but uh, they're Super Bowl champions. Uh, Georgia was the national champions, college football. But uh, the Rams are going to do well. I mean, they, they're a well-coached team. I, I really believe uh, Coach McVay um, is one of the bright stars and, and has a chance to be – to have a, a record like Coach Belichick. He really does. I, I really like Coach McVay. And, uh, but I think the Bills, the Bills have, you know, they've been to three Super Bowls. I'm sorry, four Super Bowls. They've been to four Super Bowls when Jim Kelly was the quarterback. And Jim Kelly and I both are the same age. We came out of college the same time. He, he went to Miami and I went to Stanford. And he was drafted in the first round along with my teammate, John Elway. And um, Dan Marino was drafted in the first round that, that year. 
and Tony Eason was drafted, I believe, in the first round, and uh, Todd Blackledge was drafted in the first round. They had like five really outstanding quarterbacks who were first round picks. John Elway being the first, and uh, Jim Jim Kelly was drafted, and he decided to play in the USFL for his first year or two, and then went to the Bills and was part of four Super Bowl teams that played in the Super Bowl, and uh, but they didn't win it. So they didn't get the ring, which, you know, and when you look back, it's uh, it, life isn't fair because Jim Kelly obviously had a great Hall of Fame career. He deserves many more rings than I, I have. But, you know, they say timing is everything. And so I was fortunate. I was drafted in my rookie year. We won the Super Bowl. And what a great team we had. And I believe the Raiders, I had the opportunity to meet the coach, uh, at the reunion, alumni reunion, and I met his father. And um, actually, his father said he'd like to come on the show. His father is uh, would like to be on the show with us. And um, Stu, uh, hopefully he's out there. Uh, Stu, um, Coach McDaniel's co uh, father would like to join us and talk about football because he was a he's a football coach, and his son's a football coach, and they're from Canton, Ohio, which is the epicenter of American football, even though the first American football game was Princeton versus Rutgers and that's New Jersey. So I'm, I'm, I don't know why Rutgers, I don't know why New Jersey doesn't say we're the home of American football, but Ohio, they stole it away. You know, Canton, Ohio, Maslin, Ohio, Ohio state, Cleveland Brown, Cincinnati Bengals, university of, uh, Miami, uh, the University of Cincinnati, um, so many great uh, schools. Kent State, great, great schools in, in, uh, in football schools in, in Ohio. So I am going to go with the, the, the Bills. I don't know what the spread is. It might be whatever. I think the Bills are going to win um, maybe by three points. Bills by three. And it might be more, but I'm going to say Bills by three. And then is it going to be over under? I think – you're going to see a lot of overs this weekend because uh, a lot of these players haven't played. They didn't play. The starting players didn't play much in the, in the, in the uh, preseason. So I think you're going to see high scoring games. That's what I think. So if the over unders are under 50, seriously think about going over, but that again, that's my thoughts. I could be wrong. You never know that the, the 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 referees actually can call a, a holding penalty on every play. That's one of the issues that I have with referees. They they um, they really need to have a body that uh, uh, scrutinizes the referees to, to make sure that the game um, is played fairly and everyone has the fair, has a fair chance of winning because the referees can really uh, turn a game. And so I'm hoping that this year in both the high school, or I should say high school, college, and professional football, that the referees um, have a great year and, and don't uh, make calls that could change the, the trajectory of a potentially championship team. So with that, um, let's go through the schedule. <clears throat> Since Stu, I, I'm going to call him one more time here, and this will be the last time uh, Stu uh, – you get three strikes and you're out, Stu. Let's see if you get answers to the phone. Here, it's ringing. Let's see. Let's see if he answers. Okay. It's ringing again. It's 1 o'clock. Yep, I told him 4 p.m. Eastern. Well, it's okay. We're going to just – we will uh, go through the list of, of games here. So – there we go. Let's go down the list. So I already talked about Thursday, Thursday's game. Now let's go to college football. So I'm going to go to my sports page, which I like to go. It's uh, I, I go to YouTube because I I've been YouTube. I had before Google, you know, Jerry Yang came before Sergey Brennan, and Larry page. So we're going to go to scores and schedule. Here we go. And upcoming games. Okay, Friday, Louisville plays US, UCF. 
I don't know. That's they, they say it's I, I I'm not gonna pick that game. So I don't know who's gonna win. Um games that jump out at me. Uh Northwestern. I gotta believe Northwestern's gonna take care of uh, Duke because they they played uh, they beat uh, they beat uh, Nebraska in Ireland. So I like them. I like uh, Northwestern. Um <clears throat> Ohio State. Yes, Ohio State will beat Arkansas State. Uh, that would be that their spread on that is Ohio State's giving 44 and a half points. I believe that Ohio State probably should beat them by 50 points. The score might be uh, 55 to to three. I mean, I I don't you know I think that uh, and because of this. Uh, the way they rank the teams, uh, you you know, if you're a coach, you, you really want to run up the scores. You don't want to play anyone tight, especially a team that you should be able should beat. So Ohio State, I'm gonna, I'd say they're gonna beat them by 50 points, and the spread's 44 and a half. Penn State over Ohio, now that's another one. Um, Penn State is 25 points, 25.5, and it's at Penn State. Uh, Penn State should beat them by 30 or 40 points, in my opinion. Uh, Vanderbilt, Wake Forest, I don't know. Vanderbilt's playing better. They really are. And um, it's at Vanderbilt, and Wake Forest is given 13 points. I think Vanderbilt, they're 2-0. and I think Vanderbilt could come through on that one. I think they could beat the spread. Uh, let's see. This is a huge game. Alabama at Texas. And Alabama's given Texas 20 points. I'm taking Texas. I think Texas, because the coach there at Texas, the head coach, was the offensive coordinator with Lou Saban. He knows Lou Saban, uh, Sark, Sarkissian, Coach Sarkissian. He's a good coach. I mean, he, he, and I think Texas has got a chance to upset Alabama. I really do. But I think it's going to be tight. I, that's just me. I could be wrong, but I think they're going to play him tight. Um, let's see what other games in the, in the college. Let me just see here. Um, let's see. Oh boy. I'm just seeing games. Tennessee at Pittsburgh. That's a good game. I, I don't know. It's, um, they say Tennessee is favored. Uh, who knows? That's a Furman Clemson. Well, come on. I mean, Clemson, uh, ranked five in the country. They're going to, they will beat Furman. Notre Dame playing Marshall. Now this is another one. Marshall is one and zero, and the spread. Notre Dame's giving Marshall uh, from Huntington, West Virginia. They're giving Marshall 20, uh, 20 points, twenty and a half, twenty point five points. Um, I think Notre Dame should should beat them by more, but who knows? Marshall uh, could surprise them. Uh, let's see, any other game? Oh, Appalachian State. Oh, my gosh. Now, there's a team that um, they almost won last week. Uh, they, they played, let's just see here. That game was a fantastic game, Appalachian State. The Mountaineers, and they played, who was their, who did they play? They almost beat North Carolina. 63-61, and I it came down to the last play. And so I think that Appalachian State, I would take them, and they're, gonna, they're getting 19 points. I think they – I don't know. They, they, they're getting 19 points. So I think maybe – who knows? We'll see. That should be an interesting game. Uh, Air Force – Colorado, um, Air Force is giving Colorado 17 and a half points. Wow. The, you know, the Pac-12, I, I am really saddened to hear about how the Pac-12 is doing. I mean, Oregon played Georgia last week and scored three points. And Georgia scored, you know, 50 points or whatever it was. Um the Pac-12's got problems. Other than USC and Utah, um, 
there's there's problems in the Pac-12, and and I think as the and this is what we were going to talk with Stu about. If in, for some reason he's not on, what's the future of college sports? And from my perspective, and I've talked to a lot of friends, a lot of people out there, you've got the SEC and you've got the Big Ten. And folks, this is professional football. This is no longer college football. The NC2A uh, really doesn't have any teeth anymore. And Alabama and Georgia in Michigan, in Ohio State, and I can go on and on and on, Penn State, uh, Florida, all these schools, Auburn, this is big time business, the entertainment world. And, um, you know, uh, schools like Stanford, University of California, Berkeley, UCLA, Vanderbilt, Rice, Northwestern schools that have prided themselves on being academic, uh, you know, institutions that have student athlete, uh, they're going to have some issues it's in the next five years. They're going to have to determine, do they want to go to this next level, which is professional sports? And if they want to, fantastic. Uh, what I would do if I were the president of Stanford, I'd say, great, we're going to have a football team, and but it's going to be separate. And if you want to go to school part time, great. But it, we know that your full, your number one commitment is football. And I know that's probably blasphemy or blasphemous for all of my friends at Stanford. Say, oh, no, that's not that's not the purpose of college. Well, frankly, uh, colleges, in my opinion, have been taking advantage of uh, American football players. And now it's uh, the tide has turned. And because of name, image, and likeness, and because the big – 10 signed a $7.5 billion television contract, which the players, by the way, are not participating in. I mean, it's still socialism and the Big Ten makes the money and then they give it to everybody in the you know athletic departments where the football team and the basketball team are the revenue generating the sports. So uh, what's happening right now in college football, you have – um, the College Football Players Association. And um, there's a, a professor from the University of Minnesota that has, I guess, I think he's left his position and they've started this um, association. And um, the number one thing he's, they're trying to do is get health care <laughs> for the football players. And I, I just always thought, you know, if you go to a great school like Michigan or Texas or Stanford or UCLA or whatever, Washington, whatever the school, there's a good chance there's a great medical school connected to that university. And I would think that if you were an American football player on that team, so let's say you played um, at the University of Texas, well, you dedicate four years there and you get to, um, you're given health care. After you play, because there's a good chance you probably have some injuries, you know, most players that play at that level get injured and you can not only help the university with, um, you know, you know, uh, uh, helping the, you know, uh, diagnose your ailments, whether it's CTE, which is the hitting your head too many times, or it's a skeletal issue or torn ligaments or, you know, cartilages and, you know, whatever ha the, the, the ailments that you have playing American football, I would think the university would say, great, if, if you ever have any problem, uh, Johnny or Jimmy or Tony or whatever your name is playing American football, if you ever have any problem, you can come to uh, your alma mater and get treatment. And it's not, you're not going to be, uh, you know, have to sell your home, which you hear those stories. And hopefully those stories are going by the wayside because, um, uh, medical care is so critical. And that's actually brings me to another point is we need preventative. And there's a company and I'm going to put the screen up right now. I'm going to go to my little in the background and I encourage every, all of you, if you, if you want to get your health back, this company, and I'll change the screen right now. It is an amazing company and it's called Beyond Slim. There it is. 
And I am so grateful that Rachel Kellogg get, picked up the phone and called me and said, Michael, you got to check out my com new company. And um, I'm so grateful to Rachel because I have embraced Beyond Slim. They have a technology that no one has to help you, which is Beyond Slim. I mean, everyone would like to be slim, of course, but it's beyond slim, which is getting the great nutrition in your body. Obesity is the number one comorbidity for uh, viruses like COVID. You know, if you're overweight, that you're more susceptible to um, to problems. I mean, you, you, the, mort the mortality rate goes way up with obesity. Beyond slim unbelievable technology to help you release the weight and then beyond that give you the nutrition to get your immune system enhanced and i've been trying to get this message out for the last six weeks to some of my friends and unfortunately maybe i've not done a good job because there's some of my friends that say oh well it's too much this and i'm doing something else nothing like beyond slim in my opinion nothing like it so if you hear this message again let me know and I'll send you some information. I'll send you a free sample. If you want a free sample of Beyond Slim, just private message me and say, Mike, send me a free sample and I'll send it to you. It tastes great. It's in liquid form. I mean, it's a, it, and the reason liquid form is, import, uh, is, is important is it gets into your system, the absorption. And it tastes good. They were, they've been able to make it taste good. I don't know if you've ever cracked one of those vitamins and tried to, you know, it, it, the taste is, it's, it's very difficult for people because they don't like the taste. And many people don't like to take pills. This is, you just pour it, you pour it in your water and you drink it. So anyway, that's beyond slim. So getting back to the college predictions here, Cincinnati playing Kennesaw state. Well, we know who's going to win that game. Um, Oh, this is a great game. Interstate rivalry. Iowa's playing Iowa State, and it's pretty much a pick 'em game. Iowa's giving um, Iowa State three and a half points, and the over under is 40.5. Wow. Well, that's uh, the Cyclones. Okay, that should be a good game. It's it's and it's in Iowa City. Illinois playing Virginia. I don't know much about those two teams. Um, let's see, Purdue. Now that's, uh, our friend Stu, who, for whatever reason, wasn't able to join us. That's his alma mater. And Purdue is playing, uh, where is it here? I just had it. Purdue is playing Indiana state. And I don't see a spread on that game. Um, Purdue should beat Indiana state. You know, they, they lost a close, tough one to uh, Penn state last week. So, um, and it's at home. Um, let's see. Georgia's playing Samford. Oh my gosh. And there's no spread. There's no, there, there's no, uh, they're not even, it's not even on the board. I don't know why. Georgia playing Samford, S A M F O R D. That could be 70 to three, or maybe who knows? I don't know who's the last college football team to, to, um, to score 80 points. Let's see. Hey, Siri, who's the last college football team to score 80 points? Okay. I found this on the web for, hey, Siri, who is the last college football team to score 80 points? Okay. Check it out. Well, uh, Georgia Southern, I guess. That's interesting. Georgia's, and there, there are some schools that have scored 100 points. I don't know if Georgia could store, score 100 points against Sanford, but I'm going to say they'll get close to, to 80, 70 to 80 points Georgia will score on Sanford. That's my opinion. Um, let's see here. Texas Tech's playing Houston. Oh, this is a great game. The University of Wyoming in Laramie is playing Northern Colorado. And Northern Colorado is coached by Coach McCaffrey. And Coach McCaffrey played with the Broncos and was a Stanford grad and fantastic player, Super Bowl champion. Now is the head coach for Northern Colorado. They're the Bears. And they take on 
Wyoming this weekend, one o'clock uh, Pacific kickoff. And Wyoming's one and one. You know, uh, Northern California's they haven't won a game. They're, they've just they've only played one game and they lost. But the reason this is interesting for me, and I, I'm going to tape it, I'm going to watch it or tape it, is my friend who I played with at Stanford, my teammate, right, my running back mate, Vincent White, who was a great running back at Stanford, played professional football with the Denver Gold, was a great player. His son, Isaac, is playing in the backfield, the defensive backfield. He's, a, I believe, a safety for the Cowboys. So that should be a fun game. And there's no spread. It doesn't. There's no no odds on the game for some reason. Uh, moving on. Oh, we've got uh, UCLA Bruins playing Alabama State. That should be interesting. It's at UCLA. I wonder how many people will be there. The Rose Bowl seats a hundred thousand people. That's where UCLA plays their games. And when you look at the Rose Bowl, it looks like twenty five thousand people or thirty thousand people go to the games. So it's I mean, it's uh, it's unfortunate because the Big Ten and the SEC sold out, uh, and, and even the um, the Big Twelve. The, these schools on the West Coast, uh, especially California, UCLA, University of California, and Stanford. USC is a little bit different. USC probably averages, I'm going to say, sixty thousand dollars, sixty thousand. <laughs> people in the Coliseum, maybe even, you know, and when they're really good, they probably average 70 to 80,000. So you see USC is in a different ball game and that's, uh, and we're going to get to that game because they they are playing this weekend and they're playing my alma mater, Stanford. We're going to talk about that in just a bit here. Um, let's see here. Kansas is playing um, Virginia, West Virginia. I'm pulling for Kansas. I really would love to see Kansas have an outstanding football team. I mean, one of my heroes was uh, Gail Sayers, who was a running back at Kansas. And uh, John Hadle, great quarterback, went to Kansas. And my teammates from high school, uh, Frank Sire, Bill Malavese, Kerwin Bell, Dino Bell, all went to Kansas. So I'm pulling for Kansas, guys. Um, any other games that jump out here that I'm looking at? Oh, Kent State's playing Oklahoma. And Oklahoma's given Kent State 33 and a half points. So I'd love to see Kent State um, do well. I'd love to see him make it a, a good game. Kind of like Appalachian State playing uh, North Carolina last week. Uh, Kentucky. Oh, this is a big game. Kentucky goes to Florida to take on the Gators. And the spread is uh, Florida's given Kentucky six points. I'd love to see Kentucky beat Florida because Kentucky, uh, they've um, they've done well recently. Um, let's see here. Any other schools jump out? Syracuse is playing Connecticut. I'm happy to see the Orange 1-0. and uh, Really nice to see uh, Syracuse, and they're playing Connecticut. And Syracuse is giving Connecticut 23 points. So that's a lot of points. Arizona's playing Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State's ranked 11th in the country, and they're giving Arizona State 11 points. They're both 1-0. and That should be a good game to watch. Um, and then here, let's go to Stanford, USC. The Trojans are coming to Palo Alto, to Stanford Stadium, to play USC. And um, I here's the prediction. And this is this is what I you know obviously I'd love to see Stanford win. I mean it would be great. And here is I just uh, sent my prediction up to my buddies here because they're my Stanford buddies that were going back and forth. And this is what I said. I said my prediction. Well, well, it's before I give you my prediction, I'm gonna I'm gonna predict the, the attendance. My predicted attendance for this game will be thirty five thousand, which. I believe would be the lowest attended USC Stanford game, uh, Stanford USC game in the history of the of the rivalry, and they've been playing USC and Stanford have been playing since 1905, and have only they've only um, not met in two two years out since 1905, only two years where 
USC and Stanford didn't, didn't play each other. That was 1945, which was the end of the Second World War. And I, you know, you think of Hiroshima, Nagasaki. They didn't play that year. And then this uh, uh, two years ago during the, uh, the COVID situation. So only two years out of since 1905, they've not played. And USC has won just one game out of the last five te- times at Stanford. So psychologically, and that's going back to 2010, USC's only beaten Stanford once at Stanford since 2010. Um, so given that scenario, I still think USC, because USC has the new coach from Oklahoma. They went in the transfer portal and got 20 new tremendous athletes. I think they're being well coached. Uh, This is their second game, even though um, their first game, you know, they were playing Rice, which Rice is not obviously a powerhouse. But I think Rice is a better team than Colgate. And Stanford played Colgate. And USC actually um, beat up Rice. I think uh, they um, played Rice better than Stanford played Colgate. And I just don't like a a team. I mean, I wish Stanford had played maybe Purdue or, you know, Oklahoma State or Texas or some school like that because that would prepare them for USC. I don't think Stanford – the playing Colgate is not a game that's going to prepare them. So here's the spread. The spread is eight and a half. USC is giving Stanford eight and a half points. Well, I hope Stanford wins. I really do. I really, really do. But this is my prediction for, I think USC is going to score 52 points and Stanford's going to score 30. There's my prediction. Uh, Stanford might, I'm, and I'm being kind because USC, if I were playing and I were USC, I know they have great athletes and they have, they must be very motivated because Stanford is taking care of business. I mean, coach Shaw has done a good job, but I think that this, uh, this could be different. We'll see again, I'm hoping for Stanford, but that's my prediction trying to take my, uh, remove my emotions from that, from the game. All right. Um, San Jose State is going to Auburn to play the Tigers. And Auburn's given San Jose State 23 points. Um, I don't know. I think Auburn's going to beat them by more than 23. We'll see. LSU's playing Southern University. LSU will win, no doubt. Uh, Let's see. Any other games jump out? Virginia Tech playing Boston College. Who knows? That should be a good game. Michigan is playing Hawaii. Hawaii is coming to Michigan. Hawaii is 0-2. Michigan is 1-0. Hawaii is going to play in front of 100,000 people. I mean, that's they get 100,000 people every game, more than 100,000. And the spread, Michigan is giving Hawaii 51 points. And the over-under is 67.5. I don't know. I, uh, I think, yeah, Michigan probably could beat them – 65 to seven and uh, 65 to seven. That would be, that would be over. You know, it, it should go over and Michigan could, uh, could beat them by more than 51 points. Um, San Diego state's playing Idaho state. Uh, Oregon's playing Eastern Washington. Now I'll tell you, Eastern Washington could surprise Oregon. I don't know what the spread is. It doesn't list here, but Oregon did not look good. Uh, I'd be interesting to see in Eastern Washington. Those are guys that feel like you should have recruited me. You you didn't, you didn't recruit me. Well, Hey, I'm going to show you that we can play. So it'd be interesting to see what Eastern Washington does. And Eastern Washington won their first game. Oregon obviously got destroyed by the, uh, by Georgia. Uh, BYU's playing Baylor. Now that is a big game. I was told by Vincent White, Coach White, who's coached, he coached after Stanford, Stanford in his professional football career, he coached a long time in um, college. And he said, keep your eye on Baylor. So Baylor, 
I want to watch the game. I'm going to try to tape it because obviously you can't watch every game. and I don't have all these screens. So I want to see how Baylor can take, uh, can play BYU. Fresno State, my good buddy Jeff Tedford is back as the head coach, and they're playing the Beavers. Coach uh, Taylor, the Bulldogs are playing the Beavers in Fresno. I would love to go to that game. Um, two really good coaches, and Coach Tedford's one of the best. So should be a good game. It's a pick em game. Pick em game and the over-under 61 and a half points. And then finally, Arizona's playing Mississippi State in Arizona. That should be a good game. And Mississippi State's giving Arizona 10 and a half points. Arizona might be back on track. I know they've really struggled, but uh, we'll see. We'll see if they uh, can give them a game. So that's the overview of this weekend, college. You know, those are games that jumped out at me. Um, and then finally, let's go to the NFL. I'm going to go right down the NFL and tell you, or share with you, I should say, what um, what I think is going to happen this week in the in the National Football League? You ready? Here we go. Okay, the Saints are going to the Falcons to play. Um, I I think the Saints should beat the Falcons, but um, who knows? I you know this, I would say I'll pick the Saints to win. I don't know what the spread is, but I'm going to pick the Saints. The Browns go to the Panthers. Um, you know, I think the Panthers are going to beat the Browns. I think the Browns are in trouble because of the whole Deshaun Watson fiasco. I just – I think they really uh, – and, and I think uh, um, the old quarterback from the Browns is going to – I think starting with the Panthers, I believe. So um, – I think the Panthers are going to beat beat the the Browns. 49ers go to the Bears. I don't know. Uh, 49ers should beat the Bears, but who knows? That's I'm not going to touch that game. Uh, Bengals, Steelers, I'm going Bengals, big time. Big time Bengals. Uh, Trubisky is the quarterback for the Steelers. He's not going to beat uh, Burroughs. Nope. And, and Cincinnati is smarting because they, they, they were on the losing end of the Super Bowl. So – I'm taking the Bengals. Eagles, Lions. Um, you know, I think the it's at the Lions. I think the Lions might have a pretty good year this year. So I'm going to take the Lions. Colts at the Texans. I like Frank, Frank Reich. I think the Colts are going to beat the Texans. Um, Patriots, Dolphins can never bet against Bill Belichick. Just can't bet against him. I mean, I just think. I'm always going to take Coach Belichick. So I'm going to take the Patriots over the Dolphins, even though they're going to Miami. Uh, Ravens, Jets, taking the Ravens. Uh, Harbaugh's a good coach, and he's been there a long time. Jets have got some issues. Uh, Jaguars, Commanders, I saw the Jaguars in Canton for the first preseason game against the Raiders. Um, I, think, I think Georgia, University of Georgia, could beat the Jaguars. That's my opinion. The commanders are going to win. Uh, Coach Rivera, who I played against 40 years ago in the this big game at Stanford Cal, I think he's going to get his his Washington Commanders teams to beat the Jags. Giants, Titans, I'm going with the Titans. That's just um, – it's at home. It's in Nashville, and I like the coach there for the Titans. Chiefs, Cardinals, I don't know. That's a pick em game. Uh, great game. Two great quarterbacks. Chiefs at Arizona. Here's the big one. Raiders at the Chargers. I'm going to pick the Raiders because I like the coach. I just hope that Derek Carr has a good game. He did not play one snap in the preseason. Um, I, I don't know why, but I hope he has a great game, and I hope the Raiders can beat the Chargers. The Chargers really have – motivation to beat the Raiders. It's at their place and they had a chance last year and they blew it. So uh, I'm pulling for the Raiders and I'm going to pick the Raiders because I, I have to pick the Raiders. I'm not going to, not going to pick. I mean, it's like uh, Len Dawson when he did his picks with Nick Bonacani. I don't think Len ever picked uh, anybody when the chiefs were playing. He always picked the chiefs and Nick Bonacani, I'm sure always picked the, uh, the dolphins. So I'm picking the Raiders. But the Chargers, they've got a lot uh, a lot of motivation for the Chargers. Could be a close game. 
uh, Packers, Vikings. That is an it. Here's my prediction on the Packers, Vikings. Aaron Rodgers, who's one of the most intelligent players in the National Football League, very bright guy, outstanding quarterback. He only has one Super Bowl ring. And he said this offseason he needed to do something to change his mind, set his outlook on the game. And he went to South America. I don't know what state, but he did something with, um, we call it psychedelics, which if you want to know more about psychedelics, go to fieldtrip.com fieldtrip.com and he didn't go to a fieldtrip.com in South America because they're only here in North America, but he did some psychedelic psychedelic uh, program. And he, in my opinion, has come back a different guy, different mentally, uh, mentally. So I'm picking the Packers again over the Vikings. That's my pick. And he, I think Aaron Rodgers wants to win another Super Bowl ring. I mean, he looks at Tom Brady who has seven rings and he says, I only have one. I got to get two or three more. So I'm picking the Packers. Tom Brady goes to the Cowboys. Oh, my gosh. I am praying for Tom Brady because he's a fellow Pegasus. And many of you say, well, what's a Pegasus? ENFP. That's our personality. Myers-Briggs. He's a Pegasus. I think Tom Brady is having some marital issues. I'm concerned about how old Tom Brady is. The Cowboys, if they have a defensive lineman that's a young rookie, I'm sure they could make their career by sacking Tom Brady three or four times. So I think the Cowboys are going to win this. But my friend who um, I'm here in Las Vegas with, his name is Russ Bourne. He we both agree never bet against Tom Brady. So that's going to be a great game. I don't know what to say other than I hope Tom uh, gets through the game with no injuries and I hope it's a good game. There's my assessment. And then Monday night football. Oh my gosh. What a game this one is. Let's, let's get you on this one. The, the Broncos go to Seattle, which is, I Look believe. Look who's back already. I Russell believe, Wilson and the Broncos are heading to yes, Seattle. Russell Wilson. Yeah. This game is any different than the other. Russell game. Wilson heading to Seattle to play the uh, the Seahawks. That's going to be a great game. What a great game. I And we'll see if John Elway is in the state. I, I hope John goes to the game because um, we have a good friend, Dave Wyman, who played for both uh, he was a teammate of ours at Stanford. Dave played for the Broncos and he also played for the Seahawks and now he does color for the Seahawks and I hope John and Dave see each other at the game. And um uh I am going to pick um gosh, I'm going to pick Russell Wilson to upset the Seahawks. Yep, I'm going with Russell. Um except uh it's very tough, the Seahawks, because the sound, the the um, acoustics in that stadium, Seahawks Stadium, it's one of the loudest stadiums uh, because the, how they designed it, it gets really loud. So, but Russell Wilson, he's used to it. He's that that's used to be his home field, of course. He took the Seahawks to the Super Bowl. So, that's it for uh, for the picks. And for whatever reason, Stu was not with us. So um, I'm going to call him one last time and just see if he answers the phone because maybe, maybe he got the time wrong. So we'll see here. It's ringing. Yep. It's not, he's not going to answer, but let's see here. Watch. Let's see if his voicemail comes on. Stuart Eric Schweiger. Sorry, the person you were trying to reach has a voicemail box that has not been set up. Okay, well, there you go. Stu's not there. Stu, we love you, brother. Next Wednesday, we'll have the Stu and Dot show, and maybe maybe we need to reverse it, the Dot and Stu show, because uh, I got here before he did. <laughs> so, uh, final thing, we usually say happy birthdays before. We usually give happy birthdays before. 
the show. But you know what? I'm going to give you happy birthdays right now. I'm going to wish happy birthday to Tova Friedman. Tova Friedman turns 83 today. She was in Auschwitz. She has a number on her arm. She was a little girl in Auschwitz. Happy birthday, Tova. Uh, I met Tova through her, our mutual friend, Wayne LaRock. So happy birthday to Tova. I heard her on um, NPR radio interviewed. Um, just a, a wonderful woman and trying to make sure that we never have any future Holocaust. And uh, obviously uh, we need to end the war in the Ukraine. And the way we end the war is we have to talk. We have to jaw jaw. We have to communicate. Not to uh, send bombs and, and, and escalate the war. So there we go. That's my little side note. Um, happy birthday to uh, John Radke, my teammate at Stanford. Pitcher, happy birthday, John. Happy birthday to Marty Storty, coached rugby at, at, and played rugby at St. Mary's College. Happy birthday to my uh, Uncle Bill. Uncle Bill was my uncle. Uh, for you know my whole life, and he's now transitioned. So happy birthday, Uncle Bill. He's up there. Um, happy birthday to John Prassus. John Prassus played linebacker at Brown University. He was all Ivy, and he uh, was an outstanding linebacker. And I believe he didn't play professional football. I believe he played in the USFL. Um, happy birthday to Reginald Holly, my good friend Reggie. I need to reach out to Reggie. I need to tell you about Beyond Slim, Reggie. We need to help a lot of people, thousands and thousands of people, and soon to be millions of people will know about Beyond Slim. Um, Want to wish happy birthday to Brent Branch. I met Brent in Canton, Ohio, for his father's um, induction. Uh, Cliff Branch is Brent's father, and he was inducted to the Hall of Fame, Cliff. And I met his son, Brent, uh, Brent and Brent lives – in Texas, in Houston. So happy birthday, Brent. Brent, And happy birthday to Lisa Milano, my friend Lisa. And happy birthday to Priscilla Johnson, Dr. Priscilla Johnson, who I met a number of years ago. She was working with pg and &E in California. And I want to wish uh, Dr. Priscilla Johnson happy, happy birthday. So with that, um, please. Uh, oh, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Jerry Salerno, a shout out to Jerry. His birthday was in July. He has a son named Rocco. Um, and I'll put here, watch this. Jerry has a son named Rocco, who's an outstanding wrestler in the state of New Jersey. And I believe Rocco is going to go on to play, to be a wrestler in college. And uh, Jerry, you should be very proud of Rocco. Give my love to Leanne and your entire family. And uh, I, it's exciting to follow Rocco. And I'd like to have Rocco maybe someday on, on the dot. You and Rocco. So thank you, Jerry. And um, that's about it uh, for Wednesday, September 7th, as Walter Cronkite used to say. And that's the way it is. So enjoy your weekend. Uh, lots of American football. And don't forget tennis. The uh, – I've been watching some of the U S open tennis matches, tremendous and um, great athletes playing tennis. And there's so many good things happening. Baseball. This is the last month. I, the, the Mets and the Yankees. Oh my gosh. They are, uh, they're sliding. And if the Mets and the Yankees do not make, or do not win their division, it could be the biggest slide of two New York teams ever. I mean, they, they were on top a, a month and a half ago. They were leading all of baseball, and now the Braves are right on the heels of the Mets, and the Tampa Bay and Toronto uh, are in the heels of the of the uh, Yankees. So hopefully they can pull it out. Um, the Oakland Athletics may be coming to Las Vegas here. So, and then finally the the Las Vegas Aces, they are going to the championship series, and they could be the first professional sports team to win a championship here in Los Angeles, uh, in Las Vegas. The first professional sports team in Las Vegas to win a championship. It won't, it's not going to be the Raiders. Well, unless the aces don't win, but if the aces win, they're the first 
because they, uh, the um, Golden Knights, the NHL team, they went to the Stanley Cup, but they didn't win. And the Raiders, obviously, you know, it's only their second uh, or second year, third year. So congratulations to the Aces getting to the championship series. The series is coming up. And congratulations to Mark Davis. Mark Davis not only owns the Raiders, but he owns the Aces. So congratulations to Mark. And again, wishing everyone a wonderful weekend. Be safe. And um, thank you so much for listening. We'll be back on next week. And hopefully Stu will j join us. Hey, take care, everyone. And God bless.